Well, let's let's see where it goes. Um, we can always edit it out. It's, it's harder right. to put it back in than it is to take it out. So that will never happen if I screw up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, that's right. It's, there are certain <laughs> if, conditions, if, and this Dave, where Dave, things will come out. So don't worry. If Dave says something brilliant, or if Andrew says something stupid, we know that's not going to get cut. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get to it. Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Please welcome Master Instructor from Tonkwa Werk in Austria, Mr. Anders Motz. Hello. And the master of all Master Instructors, uh, Avid's own Mr. Andy Hagerman. How you doing? And I'm Dave. And we take you deep into the work of the Pro Tools technique and ethos to help the user community get the best out of uh, our chosen and our most favoritist ever door. In this uh, episode, we're going to be looking or continuing to look at a question um, from one of our subscribers, Barry, who during his enormously long dissertation uh, that he sent us with a couple of questions, um, he ended off his email with this interesting one. He says... Another question I have is, on sends persist during low latency monitoring setting, does the audio bypass the buffer setting or does the buffer play a part in the latency? I ask because UA plugins have a live mode where their manual says the UA plugins will bypass the buffer. So what do you think? Let's talk about the Pro Tools preference first. At, le at least. Maybe we should um, talk I about low latency monitoring first. There you go. That's that's brilliant, Anders. Oh. Cut. Cut off. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep no, it Anders' right. brilliance. We've we've established that. <clears throat> so so what is low latency recording? You know, or low latency monitoring. It's something that you're going to use from time to time, especially if you're on a native system, um, and if latency is is becoming a problem for you you can go into this thing called low latency mode and certain things will happen to reduce the amount of round trip latency between the signal coming from your microphone or your guitar or your bass and getting back to your headphones so some of the things that it does is one of the things that it does is it's going to be um bypassing the sense the sense goes stupid on the tracks that are being recorded um and that means by extension that you know, if you've got a vocal track, for example, and that vocal track is going to a nice lush reverb, that when you're recording and that track is in your and you're in low latency monitoring, you're not going to hear that reverb because the send would go stupid. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, this is part of the reason why some interfaces, um, some hardware actually have some built in DSP that adds that in real time as you're as you're you're performing mm -hmm. so that you don't even have to worry about it one way or the other. So, um, but Pro Tools also has a preference. And that preference is, uh, where the heck is that preference? I don't have Pro Tools open. I, I'm going I'm to guess in operation. It's the usual process, uh, Pro Tools preferences guessing game. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'm, I'm going to put 50 yen down and I'm going to say it's in the recording <laughs> section of the, uh, the record section of the operations tab. Uh, so the record section here, uh, we've got, uh, and I would be wrong apparently. Yeah. I'm going to go with processing. Okay. So it's processing, you see, and that is, eh, eh. Eh, eh. do you know what? what? So please. Oh, well, mixing would Dodge. make sense. Editing wouldn't. There you go. It's got to be. It's not going to be a mixing or editing. It's going to be. There you go. Sounds uh, persist during LLM under setup there you at go. the top. Yeah. So fourth one down on the top. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so allow sense to persist in low latency monitoring. You know, I would have put that in record because mm. the only time I would ever use that is in record. But it's in recording. Go. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So when you click this, when you enable this preference, even when you're in low latency monitoring the sends won't go stupid, so that signal will still get sent to whatever it is that you have. Now, does that mean that there'll be extra latency? Yes, that latency will go downstream to whatever your reverb is or whatever your delay is or whatever, whatever, 
um, we're going to. But it, generally speaking, we don't care that much about the the addition of whatever samples are in your hardware buffer. So that that just has the effect of moving moving mm. your pre delay um, on on that reverb just a little bit uh, longer. So the room might 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 appear just a little bit larger. So um, is this only, but that's is, that's is, usually not an issue. Is this only on tracks that are record enabled? That's right. So all of the other sends in the session is, are still going to remain fine. That's right. So yeah. it, it, it may not necessarily be a problem with reverb, as you said, but if he might be doing an overdub um, admit, amid some parallel compression, where he's possibly got through, done through sends. That could, yeah, yeah. Or, or you're using sends to uh, to create a headphone mix. You mm -hmm. you might have some latency issues there and uh, mm -hmm. I mean there is a way to combat this if you're using the HD native uh, mm. hardware from from Avid which has a dedicated low latency monitoring path mm. that you can use uh, so that you will minimize that kind of latency. I think Anders yeah. uh, observation on the headphone sense is a key one for bigger installs mm -hmm. where they're probably using a headphone distributor. <clears throat> Mm. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, so why don't I have this on? Because I'm using the HDX system, so uh, th I'm not really in the low latency monitoring domain at all because mm. I don't typically have latency on on records anyway, or not that much at least. Mm. Overlooking the fact that that was a humble brag, um, I think that. <laughs> No, but I, I mean, it's just a distinction what the HDX or the carbon will do for you, right? Yeah, completely. No, you're 100% yeah. you're, you're right. I'm just teasing. But the other thing, too, and I think a lot of people overlook this, is even if you've got a native-based system, remember that in your preferences, the hardware buffer setting in your preferences is only for record-enabled tracks. Your playback tracks have a separate larger hmm. hardware buffer. So... I'll be I'll be honest. Unless you've got a ton of instrument tracks and 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 aux tracks and stuff like that going on, you can get away with really low hardware buffer um, settings and not even realize that they're, they're set that low. And that gives you you know fairly low latency recording right there without getting into you know mm -hmm. any of the preferences. Uh, do we dare open uh, the box here to, to uh, one part of the question where he mentioned that UAD have a setting to disregard the, the hardware buffer? Uh, I think you just did open the lid to that box. <laughs> Come on in, yeah. everybody. Come on in. Go, go. <laughs> yeah, so, so basically, if you think about the UAD plugins, they are not a native process on your CPU, and they basically don't have anything to do with the the uh, the hardware buffer size or uh, that we have in in protos or actually they have an additional hardware right. buffer size that will affect the latency of, of your sound mm. so when uad state that it will bypass the the hardware buffer size they are not talking about the pro tools hardware buffer size setting because that you cannot ex escape Right, it, it's their own buffer size, and and with with you, there's UA makes some great plugins, but there are some plugins that are specifically designed for for existing on your your main bus, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but people put them on you know record enabled tracks, and you wind up with a massive amounts of latency and multiples um, of them as well. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, and 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 they can do some they can they can do some havoc, right? Just understand that you know some of those. Some of those plugins are designed for specific uses, and and mm. and understand that that latency of those plugins, you know, being an external uh, process to, to Pro Tools is is unavoidable, right? That's not something that you can change with your own Pro Tools hardware buffer or preferences. Can we boil it down into a simple answer at the end? Uh, I would say you know if you if you're running a, a native system. And and you're pushing it to the point where low latency monitoring is something that you're you're doing. Check that box. Um, mm -hmm. The downside of it is is generally not noticeable uh, unless you're like a, like you're saying if you're mm -hmm. if you're doing something like parallel compression or something like that. But if you're using it in the traditional way of, of using time based effects, reverbs, delays, and stuff like that, it's you get benefit and there's really no cost to that. Mm. When we're recording using low latency monitoring, 
can you do that through the UA plugins because of that round trip? Or should they be bypassed? Because well, again, I mean, if it's a reverb, I've, you know, it's it's not the end of the world, it, and it's something that's happening in real time anyway. Well, so I, it's, I, it's not, you're I not think printing anything. I, I would assume that he's talking about compression and the 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 compression and the EQ plugins on the track that he's recording on. But he's talking about sense, right? He's talking about sense. He is, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't worry, Anders. I'm going to keep this bit in. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, if if you're talking, I mean, if it was, you know, if it was on, you know, in the track, then yeah, that's that's a foregone conclusion. Those things are gone when you're mm -hmm. in low latency. Um, but the sends is something you have some control over, and you can either keep them on or you can have them go stupid. Okay. An interesting look um, and insight into low latency monitoring. Thank you very much, you guys. Uh, so if you got a lot of out of this, uh, out of this episode, um, give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, if you wouldn't mind. And uh, hit the bell icon. You get notified every time we release new videos. Uh, you can head over to ProToolsAnswers.com. You can subscribe over there. And Andy will write to you every so often to let you know what we're up to. And you can also subscribe to our ProTools Answers in a circle. And uh, you can read about the tiers and the benefits um, over at ProToolsAnswers.com, um, one of which uh, is monthly master classes with Anders and or Andy and or myself and or all of us <laughs> but they're always lots of fun um, yeah. whoever's there and uh, the guys are getting epic amounts out of it so if you want to be part of that uh, please come and join our inner circle community and um, so all leaves me to say is thank you very much to Anders thank you Dave. and thank you to Andy you bet you guys are legendary and you guys are legendary my name's Dave this is Pro Tools Answers <laughs> and we're out <laughs> Oh, shut up, Anders. <laughs>